There is no doubt about it. RAM, with all of the numbers and all of the latencies and all of the complications, why can one piece of RAM cost $500 and the other one cost $150 when there's only two numbers that are different? It's confusing. It's complicated. But in this video today, I'm going to talk a little bit about RAM because you see Ryzen CPUs love, love fast RAM. And in order to get the most out of your system, you need to get the most out of your RAM as well. I am the Grang Tech, a gaming insider, and if you'd like to learn how to improve your gaming performance, start now by clicking that subscribe button. Okay, so jumping straight into it, if you are simply here for a recommendation, these are the two modules that I recommend you take a serious look at and try to figure out if you're able to procure them. This right here is the G-Skill Neo. Now this is a 3.6 gigahertz with a 16 cast latency piece of RAM. Works very well with the 3000 and the 5000 X57s and B55 motherboards that are out there. The other, if you think you have a great CPU, you could try to go for the 4000 series, also for G-Skill. This happens to be the Royal version right here. Both of these memories work with the 3000 and 5000 series CPUs, but this one is that much more faster and potentially that much more better than what is out there. If you want some further recommendations, I'm going to talk about it in this video, but there's also this site right here, which can help you identify the exact BDI module that might improve your overall performance. All right, so those are the recommendations. If that was helpful for you, consider giving this video a thumbs up. For those who are sticking around, the first place that we are going to go is actually the manufacturer of your motherboard, and you're going to want to find the qualified vendor list. That is QVL. And this can significantly improve your ability to find RAM that has been certified to work with your hardware with your motherboard and the processor that you're trying to use. Additionally, one of the things I really like about G-Skills website is they show the QVL for the module itself. You can see right here under ASUS, the X570 motherboard with the 5000 CPU. And right here is the motherboard that I use. So that is a quick way that you can reference RAM that has been tested and somewhat certified to work with your motherboard and with your chip. But there's so much more in the world of RAM itself. So let's jump over to our frenemy PowerPoint and actually dive into all of this information to help you actually pick out a kit that makes sense for you. So first up, we have this thing called Infinity Fabric. And Infinity Fabric are those little chiplets on the CPU that you stuck down into that slot. They all have to talk to each other. And that infinity fabric likes to be half the speed that you see of your RAM. It's a two to one ratio. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's take a 4,000 RAM kit, which I happen to have here that will be going into Red Star here shortly. Now here you can see the frequency and the clock speed, same thing is 4,000. You see that in two separate places. If you divide 4,000 by two, you get 2,000. That means your Infinity Fabric on your CPU would ideally run at 2,000 megahertz. Now, not all CPUs are going to be able to do that. So that's why you have to make sure that you have a good CPU kind of really before you try to even throw this level of RAM at it. The second thing that you need to consider, the 4,000 is the time, but there's a delay. And that's the second number that you see in the item name. And that's the first number that you see in this list of weird dash numbers for some reason. And that is called the cast latency. So this is going to be a very important number because it helps determine how long a lot of the other timings are going to wait on your RAM kit. And in fact, there's a relationship between the speed 4,000 and this cast latency 16 number. So all of this is defined. There is a standard that exists out there that basically says, if you have this speed 
the cast latency should be this so that the what they call the first word latency is 10 nanoseconds. And that spec is defined for several pieces of RAM, but most of the RAM you're looking at is actually XMP based or a derivative thereof. In other words, it's overclocked. It performs better than spec. So if you start looking here at a 3600, that should have a cast latency of 18, giving you 10 nanoseconds. For this 4000 module you have right here, 4000, cast latency should be 20 and 10 nanoseconds. So this relationship is one of the first things that you will need to figure out when you are trying to select your RAM. And here's how you can determine if the RAM kit you're looking at is good, spec'd, or bad. If the first word latency is less than 10, that is a very good piece of RAM. If the first word latency is equal to 10, it's at spec. If it is higher than 10, that actually means you have poor RAM. It's going to perform worse than spec. And here is the formula itself to actually do the number there. But you can also do something kind of quick and easy to at least get to the 10. What is half of 36? 18. Cast latency should be 18. What's half of 38? 19. Cast latency should be at least 19. Half of 32? 16. Cast latency should be 16. So that's at least how you can find the 10. And then if this number is smaller than 16, good RAM. If this number is larger than 16, not so good RAM. So there's a quick and easy way to basically make sure that you're getting good RAM versus maybe not so good RAM. So the ideal spec for RAM today, as identified by Gamers Nexus and several other tests in a price to performance ratio is 3600 for the speed, 16 cast latency, a one to one to one subtiming ratio. This is those numbers with the dashes. And then you're targeting Samsung B die. And that previous website that I showed will help you identify all of the memory kits that are out there that have this specific kind of RAM. There is something that makes this RAM special. It is very good for overclocking. It can take a lot of extra volts. That's why it is so coveted by people who are going to overclock their RAM. But at the same time, it ensures that you're getting good quality, even if you're not interested in doing the overclocking itself. So it's actually worth it to kind of pay for this extra assurance of getting really good quality stuff. And ultimately, the recommendations that I made earlier lead exactly from these. So let's break down these numbers so that you know exactly what you are getting and so that you can compare this RAM kit with a different RAM kit that's out there because maybe you need to save a few bucks and hey, I get it, completely understand. Got a penny pinch where you can so that you can splurge on a nice graphics card, at least, you know, that's what I would do. So the first number that we really care about outside of capacity, right? The, the capacity here is always gonna be subjective. I like 32 gigabytes. I do a lot of stuff on my machine. I have a lot of things running at the same time. So I like 32. You can probably get by nowadays with a 16, but that's going to fall to you. Breaking down these numbers, the first one that you see here is 3600 megahertz. So our clock speed is 3600. Divide that by two, and now you have Infinity Fabric, and that is 1800. So everything there looks good. Next, cast latency is 16. Let's do the quick math there. 36 divided by two is 18. We're below that. Our cast latency is 16, so this is good RAM. That leads us to first word latency here of 8.8 .8 nanoseconds. So this is faster than spec. So this is going to be what we call tight timings. This is going to be very fast RAM. This is going to probably give you just a little bit more performance, but we're going to test some of these things in a future video. Next up, you have two additional latency numbers, row latency and pre-charge latency. If you really want to know what these mean, I have links and descriptions and stuff down below. Feel free to dive in. But what you're wanting to think of here is this ratio. 
One to one to one is generally what is recommended. You can't always achieve it, but it is what is recommended. And we'll go over a scenario next about why you can't always achieve it. Next up, you have this row active time, and you see 36 here. The number you want is your row latency, which came right here, and that's 16, plus your cast latency, which is right here, also 16. So that's 32. And then there's another timing inside of the secondary timings that you probably will not see advertised on the box. So for these purposes, you can add a four or you could add a five because that's in this speed range. Those are kind of the numbers of, of what that would be. So add four and you get 36. This number here in a good kit will equal what you got out of this. Next up, this is that 4,000 series piece of RAM that I was talking about earlier. Let's do the same thing on this as well. So again, 4,000 for clock speed means 2,000 for infinity fabric. Next up, you have cast latency of 16. And if we do the math, that actually results in a first word latency of eight nanoseconds. So extremely good RAM. Our row latency and our pre-charge latency, though, are 19. And should this be a problem? Because our ratio is off. It's not 1 to 1 to 1. It's 1 to 1.19 to 1.19. Well, we'll come back to that in just a sec. Let's take a look at the row active time. We see 39. So we have to add 16 plus 19 for 35 plus 4 for 39. So this is as low as it could possibly be. So that's what we want. So back to this ratio, because this is going to throw some people off. But here's, here's the catch. If this was following spec, all three of these numbers would be 20, but it's not. The cast latency here is very good at 16. That's giving you excellent first word latency. The row and the pre-charge latency are also below spec. They're below 20. So even though it's not a perfect one to one to one, it is still below spec and still pretty fast, pretty tight timings, especially considering this is a 4,000 clock speed memory kit. Websites after websites give you these groups of numbers and kind of just expect you to digest and know exactly what you're looking for. So that's what you're looking for. You have to consider your infinity fabric, divide clock by two. You have to consider this relationship between the first two digits of the RAM clock speed and the cast latency. You want something at 10 or below, and then you want a tight, tight ratio right here between the other three numbers. But in order to even take advantage of this, you have to remember to go to your BIOS and enable it because by default, it's just gonna go with spec. And in the next video right here, I'm gonna go over exactly how to adjust your ASUS and your MSI motherboard to enable DOCP and AXMP to get you the speed that you just paid for.